Pisces, it's me, Stormy, and welcome to your January 2020 horoscope, and we're going to break this month down, see what is going on, what's coming for you, where the ease, where a little bit of tension's at, but ultimately, I have to tell you, we've got the lunar eclipse happening, we've got Uranus coming out of retrograde, and we've got this great Saturn-Pluto conjunction that is big, but I think this is a really nice month for you, Pisces, I really do. So let's jump in and take a look around here, okay? So first of all, at the beginning of the month on January 2nd, we've got this cool business happening where you can see already that the 11th house is heavy. And if you've watched your annual forecast, you know that the friends, the social grouping, the networking, all of that is really big and really important for you this year. And this is no different. But we do have Jupiter and Mercury traveling together here in a conjunction. And when Jupiter, who's the planet of this big ideas, the big mindedness, the yes, let's go forward, let's do something big and vast and expansive, comes together with Mercury, the planet of details, because Mercury's like, yes, we can do all of that, but we need some details about how we're going to get that done. When these two come together, this tells me that this is not only optimistic energy, this is big plans on the agenda for you. This is a big plan getting put in place for you, Pisces, and that big plan happens to be in the 11th house. This is friends groupings, organizations, maybe networking in some way, shape, or form. So there is a big formation of something coming for you in this area, and it is ultimately very, very positive. If there was a business dealing that you needed to take on or business decisions you needed to make, this is an area where your connections would be very good and very strong for you, okay? On the third, we see Mars entering the very comfortable energy and domicile of Sagittarian, a fellow, or Scorpio, excuse me, a fellow water sign, and into the energy of Sagittarius. Now, this is going to light up your 10th house. You've got Mars at the top of your chart this month, Pisces. That is phenomenal. That is not only phenomenal for business, but it is also phenomenal for um, being recognized, having your reputation known for something good and something positive. Now, Mars is Mars. Mars is action. He's energy. He's movement. He's assertion, right? So maybe at work with all of the things that you've been learning and worrying about and dealing with and putting your effort into at work, somewhere in your social zone, you're actually getting some recognition. Or maybe there was a project you wanted to get off the ground, a promotion you'd like to come your way. Let's say that you're retired or you're not working. This is a great place to be finding what you're going to be known for in your community. It just gives it some ump and some energy to get you out there and to get you moving. It is also quite wonderful here because Aries rules your second house in the general reading that this tells me this could be great for your finances. This could be absolutely phenomenal for finances for you as well. And it's okay to make a little bit of extra money, right? Nobody's mad at that. So I'd love to see how that manifests for you. Make sure you put it in the comment section down below, okay? On the 8th, we've got this Jupiter energy that's going to come into conjunction with this transiting south node. Now, the 8th and the 9th become for us days of reflection, not necessarily days of planning and taking big actions or activities, because Jupiter is bringing wisdom, and this transiting south node is showing you that maybe there are people in your circle Maybe there are organizations. Maybe there are dreams or ambitions that you had for your future that don't fit anymore. And the self note is saying, okay, Pisces, I need you to detach from them because our soul is saying that's not right for us anymore. We need to adjust. We need to let those go. And Jupiter is showing you the wisdom. So this is a day to reflect over the last year. What have you been being shown about your friendship group, about your social group, about your plans or your visions moving forward, right? This is a big energy. And I also think because this is opposite the fifth house, um, Pisces, if you've been wanting to have some romance in your life, um, you're going to have to say yes. You're going to have to not be so independent and have to be comfortable all the time. Sometimes it's going to be a bit uncomfortable to go out here and to, to allow this area to develop. But either way, the wisdom that you're being shown there will help you make decisions to move towards your own expression, your own voice, some true love, some fresh beginnings, and some joy ultimately, okay? All right, when we get to the 10th, we've got this full moon lunar eclipse happening over here at 20 degrees of Cancer. Now, this lunar eclipse is still our full moon for the month. So it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, and it will make this adjustment for about six months, okay? 
with the lunar eclipse being here, one of the things that I would tell you is let's look over joy and play and laughter in your life. Do you have that? Have you been accessing it? Are you playing? Are you laughing? Are you smiling? Are you letting love into your life? This is a wonderful energy for saying, okay, I'm done just having it be all me or you just always get put in the friend zone, right? And I'm ready to have something else. Now, the other thing I think of in the fifth house is children, right? So whether it be your children, children that are around you, some kind of connection to children, you may be, um, you may be interacting with them in some way, shape, or form, but it's very positive because it's the direction the North Node is trying to help you develop in. So maybe they need your help. Maybe there's a friend who needs help with their kids or something like that. The lunar eclipse will still bring a little bit of disruption, but ultimately it's kind of a nice course correction for you to have something good going on over here. On the 11th, we've got two things going on. The first one is, is that we've got Uranus, who's over here in retrograde in the energy of Taurus coming out of retrograde and being direct right here in your third house. Now, when Uranus was retrograde, he was showing you the structures, the ideas, the beliefs that you had before that were not going to work out for you anymore. He's like, these were good while they were there, but I need you to change your mind, Pisces, about some things. We need some new information. We need some new education. We need learning. We need new communication, right? So as he is direct here, this Uranian energy is going to help you understand what you need to change and what you got to keep from this third house area, which is communication, learning, teaching, writing, sharing of yourself in some way, shape, or form, and certain your, certainly your beliefs. Now, I'm telling you, something about your beliefs connected to your friendship or your social zone or how you were going to get to the future zone is going to play out here. Something here is going to get different, but it's ultimately going to lead you over here. There's a lot more joy, there's a lot more play, and there's a fresh start over here. All right, the other thing that's happening on the 11th or 12th, just depending on where you live, is going to be this Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Now, this is a big deal because, first of all, it doesn't happen all the time, right? So we haven't seen this bad boy since the 80s, so this is a big deal. So if you're an 80s baby, it's our time to shine. But what this means is that this is a slow evolutionary push, so it creates this change not only for us globally, but for us individually as well. So for you, Saturn is saying, I need you to mature here. I need us to grow up, come to the next level. And Pluto says, okay, I'll help us die off in this area so that we can live fully in another way like that Phoenix energy to have this area be supported and successful. So some of what you may experience with this Saturn-Pluto business is sometimes it feels like loss. It feels like something is being pulled out of there. And if it feels that way or you're feeling a need to make change, it's because what's there doesn't belong in Anymore. So what could that look like? This is a busy time of the 11th house. I'm telling you if there are friends or connections to any kind of social situation that just don't fit anymore, you've outgrown them, they've outgrown you, you don't have the same beliefs as them anymore. Maybe you just don't want to talk to them anymore, right? Those are things that could be pulled out of there. But ultimately, it's going to say, hey, well, then you've got to speak up and have your own voice. Tell us what you're interested in in so that we can bring you the correct kind of friends and groupings to support you in that. Another thing that this could look like, because I'm just thinking about um, this lunar eclipse is in such an individual house, right? It's very, it's a very self-expressive kind of house. You could have a friend that has something going on in their life and again, maybe they need your help or they need your attention or you're being of service to them in some way, shape or form. And that may last for a little bit up here. So you may also be helping someone or an organization or something like that. On the 13th, we've got Venus hitting the road. She's moving out of the energy of Aquarius and moving into your sign, into the energy of Pisces. Now, Venus here in your sign is just lovely. You guys seem to like each other. There's beauty. There's um, a magnetism that happens here. Whenever Venus comes into the first house, you get cute. You know, <laughs> like there's just a, a magnetism coming from your skin, from your words. Maybe you want to freshen up your look for the year. You're feeling beautiful. Maybe you want to stay home and, and do some you time, some self care some what does Pisces need right now that could be a wonderful energy plus he's here with your ruling energy so these two uh, Neptune and Venus together I call the Bopsy twins because they just make everything more delicious right now on the 27th 
I will tell you, those two come together in an actual conjunction, and I do love them together. I think it's entirely creative. I think it's entirely psychic. I think it brings the potential for new romance to your table, new relationships, new financial opportunities. It's so good, but it's not always clear. It can lead to a disappointment on the other side. So on the 27th, you want to just wait. Hold off for a minute before you make any really big decisions because you may find yourself disappointed on the other side if you didn't have all the facts, okay? On the 16th of the month, we see Mercury and the Sun. Well, we see Mercury first, and then on the 20th, the Sun, leaving the energy of Aquarius and move our, the energy of Capricorn, my goodness, and moving into Aquarius. So we've got Mercury coming here, we've got the Sun coming here, and then on the 24th, we're gonna have a new moon happening in Aquarius as well. So all of these begin to light up your 12th house space. Mercury in the 12th house is original thinking because it's in the energy of Aquarius for you. And one of the things I feel like Mercury puts you in a position to do there, especially with Uranus alive and well in your communication zone, is to stop hiding. If you have been hiding in some way or you've been, you know, it has been a season where many people have just wanted to hibernate, right? Or we kind of just need to push off from the crowd a little bit. This may be the time where you're like, yeah, I think I can go to that dinner party. Um, yes, I can and am actually available to come out. I am not just snuggling the cat. You know what I mean? Like whatever it is. But this may also tell you if you've just been on the go, 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 it's okay to stay at home. It's okay to have some Pisces time. It's okay to finish up some projects you need to before you get to birthday time so that you can have a nice culmination to your year. Um, ultimately, what you're doing here, especially with this new moon being here, is seeing with the things that you've had going in your past, the things that happen in quiet or in silence or are hidden or projects or research that you're doing back there, where can you release some of them to have freedom moving forward in your next year? Because it will also bring you mental and health freedom, right? You won't feel like you've got these things just on your table. Now, if here with this new moon, if what you'd like to plant those seeds of intention about are new spiritual practices, grounding, meditation, the right kind of alone time, not just the kind where we're hiding, but the right kind of alone time that actually recharges you. Maybe lots of good music that just makes you feel like, yes, Pisces, yes, whatever it is. I say whatever is fascinating and attractive to you in this area, plant those seeds of intention to allow the original thinking to bring you to your next destination, okay? One other date I wanna share with you, I told you about the 27th, but the 28th, is a helper to you, but also not a great day to be making big decisions because of the fog of the Neptune and Venus conjunction. Now on the 28th, on the 27th, Venus and Neptune come together. It's so good, delicious, potential disappointment if you make big decisions. But Mars is going to square this Neptune energy on the 28th. So it's literally like Mars up here from your work zone is challenging this, right? He's like, no, 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 no. We don't have all the energy to take on a new project or no, don't make that decision. We don't have all of the information. Mars is going to challenge this in some way, shape or form. It's going, that square is going to put you under tension and pressure to pay attention to what's in reality not what you're thinking is there. And I will tell you too, Pisces, in this social zone, really pay attention to how you're conducting yourself. Mars taking on Neptune can also give us the indicator that you maybe have to own a mistake that you made at work. You maybe have to own, did you gossip about somebody in a social circle and it got back to someone at work, right? Do you need to mend fence with someone in a social circle? Whatever it is, this may be putting you in a position to just own what's going on in reality so that you can clean it up and move forward nice and free, okay? All in all, I think it's going to be a good month. You've got romance. You've got a little bit of work. You've got some friends. You've got availability to take a nap if that's what you need to do. January, I think, is genuinely coming up, Pisces. All right, my friends, I love you so much. I look forward to seeing you in the free forecast marathon with Astrology Hub January 9th through the 12th. So sign up in the description box down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please let me know how the month is unfolding for you. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Many, many blessings. Bye.